Hi guys and welcome to the first episode of Soundcheck with Soph. We're here down at the Loud and Proud Studios owned by Tommy and yeah today I'm joined with Freya and Freya I mean you've been pals for years. We have. <laughs> yes, for, for years and years and this podcast is all about exploring into the creative arts from all walks of life. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I work in the Bungalow Paisley which is a small non-profit community interest music venue and it's great. Um, it's great to work there because I have a lot of experience in artist management and events and I'm also a bookkeeper there. Well, yeah, it's great to great to have you here. <laughs> great to be here. So <laughs> I'm delighted. <laughs> yeah, so Freya, you've been involved, you know, within the creative industries uh, for quite quite some time now. Yeah, I'd say so as far as I can remember to be honest, like first memories like this falling asleep on a pub bench listening to my dad's band. My dad's always been in band since I was a wee girl. And I guess that's kinda encouraged me to pursue that as a career. When I was 14, he decided to open up Bricklane Studios with his friend Chris, so they did that together. And that was great. I had to work in there, answering the phones, showing bands to rooms, and like cleaning the toilets sometimes, doing all the really <laughs> fun bits. But um, after that, uh, I was about 17 when I went for a job working in the bungalow on the door and I've worked there for like six years. I've worked there for a really long time, so I still work for the bungalow. But um, so I was 17 and when I was about 21, my dad decided to move on from Brick Lane and him, he met Tommy and him and Tommy actually bought the studio, the bungalow together, um, which is great because then after that, my dad was about my boss, which is like, you know, it's got good points and bad points, <laughs> but um, <laughs> It's good for me because then I eventually got to be moved from working on the bar, working on the door and doing gigs and I got to learn some bookkeeping experience and so from working in the bungalow it kind of made me want to go pursue kind of that as a career so I went to college, did two years music business in college and then went to uni and I did commercial music and now I've got my degree. Oh, so well, congr congratulations you. on I'm your delighted. degree. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, just a few weeks ago you, got, you yeah. graduated from that, Yeah, it, it was. It was about a month ago or so now. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice one. I'm very proud of myself. Yeah, I'm proud of you. <laughs> so you've, you've, there's so much, you know, that you have, like you have did. And would you say, like, you've always sort of had before, like your dad, you were saying with your dad, you know, being in bands and things like yeah. that. Is that when you realised, like, this is something well, that, like I'm interested in, like being in the creative arts. Like. It's yeah, creative arts for sure. It's always been a massive crossover for me because when I was in school, I really wanted to go to art school. Tried that for a wee bit, realised it wasn't for me. But I'm really lucky um, that I've been able to use my love for art and my love for music and make a career kind of out of both. So obviously, I do still keep the books for the bungalow. But I also put on a lot of gigs, and one of the main things that I do at the moment is painting a pint, yes. which is my passion project. And that is like, I love painting a pint. It's so nice to actually be able to like make a decent bit of money coming in every month. So it's a monthly event um, where people come down. It's got an open mic night, and uh, there's base. It's a bit of a free for all. I've got a big table of like art supplies, so people come and they can like paint and draw and sing and. People love it. It's only three pounds entry, and the next event's on the nineteenth. So, uh, guys, the nineteenth. <laughs> better be there. Better be there. Yeah. So that is super exciting, and I get what you mean. You know, being able to have it all together. So you've got your arts, and yeah. you can still be able to have Honestly, people. It's been so lovely for me, and that actually started as a project in uni as well. So um, I did it for a while um, in uni, and then when I left uni. Because even though I just graduated last month, I've been out of uni for a wee while um, and I continued that on and I've been running it for, well, I actually did that when I started uni, so I've been running Painting a Paint for about two years now, um, which is actually really bizarre to even say and like, pe like people s start to know about it now. I don't know most of the people that come and, you know, if, if anyone puts on events, you know, that's when it starts to become quite real for you because, you know, you're not, you know that you don't have to like rely on people to come to your events so your gigs or something and you're not relying on other people to do things for you or like put things all off your own back 
So it becomes really real and really nice when you see people enjoying themselves and people that you don't know return to your events and stuff. Really, really good. Yeah, no, I can see that. And with a smile on your face, yeah, I can I'm see delighted. how much that it, me it means to you. <laughs> it and does. I did, I did notice that at the last uh, paint in the paint, there was so many people there yeah. that we didn't know. And yeah. me and my friend Mia, like, we were just sitting and we were like, this is amazing. Like, Aww. there's so many people <laughs> here that, that, that are new. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, you know, and it was just great. And with the performers as well, there's so, it's yeah. a very big wide range of oh. people who get to perform. From working in the studio and work, so I've worked there since I was 14, I've heard a whole lot of bad musicians, a whole lot of good musicians, <laughs> but... Then going on to the bungalow, seeing like I worked in the bar, worked in the door, put on if put on gigs there with with different artists and stuff. So you really get to know who's good, and you get a really good like relationship with the musicians that come in. So I'm really lucky that you know I've got all the good ones that play at Paint a Pint now, and I know so many good bands to come and play at the gigs and that I'm putting on and it's it's building relationships as well like that's a really important thing in the music industry especially if you're not a musician and you're in the business side of things then it's like it can be a wee bit harder to kind of get yourself out there and get seen so building relationships and networking and that's like really key to having a good event knowing that you can rely on the musicians to be there and that they're going to be really good when they are and that they care about it too yeah of course because they do like yeah i can see that they do and they make me they tell me that they do so that's nice yeah. as well yeah really and you good. offer them and you offer them a free drink and they get a free drink for playing yeah, so you know so you get a free <laughs> drink if you're playing yeah. so yeah definitely and um, and it's good as well i think it's gained you know we know a few people who weren't really um didn't really perform before yeah. and they've got really into performing First -time now. performers i love them i love them and Honestly, see all the first time performers that we've had at, at Painting a Pint anyway, that's been because there's a, a weekly jam on a Tuesday that's also great. But um, speaking for Painting a Pint, like all the performers that have came and played first time have all been amazing and it's so refreshing. And like, because you never know what it's going to be like, and it must be absolutely terrifying for them. I could never do it, I don't know how musicians do it, which is why I've decided. I'll take a step back and just tell them all what to do instead. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, to be fair, I just go for the, to, for for the fun. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not artsy. It's very, like, nice I'm night. not very good. I like the collages. I've loved I like your to, call. <laughs> I've seen your collages. I've, I think they're great. <laughs> Me and Mia are sitting like really. Like, oh, You're no. one. That's the one that I was thinking of. You were like, I yeah. want to take it home. But yeah. I want to take it home. I know. I was like, who's putting it in whose memory box? Oh, like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> It is though. It's like some people were really, really good at drawing. Oh like, yeah. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm yeah. Really we had a competition <laughs> once. I had to like, so you have to invest money to have a good event. And painting a paint is quite a low cost event. So there was this event with the competition. I knew that I would have to put a wee bit more of my money to get good prizes because I wanted people to want to enter it and stuff, which is great. So I was a wee bit nervous. Would the turnout be all right? Would people actually want to do it? But turnout was great. And the drawings that we got entered into that competition, honestly, some of them weren't drawn. I mean, obviously a lot of it wasn't drawings because we've got collage stuff. We've got paint, we've got different kinds of paints. We've got all sorts of stuff there for you to do. But some people had built straight up little like houses out of paper. Yeah. <laughs> I was pure like, what the heck? And then, well, it was just amazing. There's some really talented artists that come in. Yeah. Yeah, and you had yeah you had like little prizes and things yeah, like that. Yeah, had didn't good you? prizes. One of the prizes was one of the prizes was a ticket to any gig that you want to go to in the bungalow, which is a really good prize because like For you know there's lots of different bands that we have coming in. Some of them are quite big. Some of them are cover bands. Some of them are in, like local introducing that are some of them are the best. But the person that won actually decided to use their ticket to come back to paint the paint. I know, I don't know if I ever told you. I never knew that. I, I thought that like was like me and Sam, my boyfriend, were talking about it, and we were just like, "How nice is that? That that's what they used their ticket to come back for." And I didn't know the person as well, but um, keep in contact with them on Instagram. So we shout out to them because they donated a lot of um, supplies at the last event. Oh, that's I know, it was very kind. So. Oh, oh <laughs> that is that's amazing. And I think the thing as well about the bungalow is it's like one big family. 
isn't it? Everybody's just oh, so yeah. It and has become. It yeah, really has everyone's become so close, family. and you know, like even if you don't know anyone when you go in there, you know you're oh, gonna go in, and the everyone's staff gonna be are so friendly. So friendly. They will. They will just grab you and like be like. Right, you're a friend now. Like, yeah, yeah. Great. I love all the stuff there. Yeah, I went to the jam last night, mm -hmm. and it's just it's just great. Like it's just like a we a wee weekly like yeah. catch up, you know. Like <laughs> yeah, for me, even because I left the bar, I left working like in the pub, but they really still make me feel like I'm part of the team. They still include me in all like cocktail training and stuff. Yeah. Like it's brilliant. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah, I remember one time. Did you not go to? Testing, were you not testing? Oh, yeah, we testing? went, we did a beer test. The beer test one time. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, in um, Two Towns Down, which is a lovely little, tiny little brewery in Paisley, and they have gorgeous beer. Even if you if you don't like beer, they've got like kind of flavoured beer and lighter ones and heavier ones. So it's, and some, some of them are like 8%, like some of them are really strong. So we all actually waddled out of that. <laughs> like, it was hilarious. <laughs> but that was great. And we, we have a couple of their. Um, beers on draft now in the bungalow. Oh. One of them they made one for us. It's called Bungalow IPA. It's really nice. Sick, it's I love that. Yeah, it's oh, really good. nice. I need to try that. I've not yeah, actually tried it. It's that. actually got this is like the arty part of me coming out again, but it's got such a nice little logo. I don't know if you've ever oh. seen it on the tap, but it's like a punk woman because the bungalow has punk roots, so it's like a really like it's like she's got a big mohawk. It's yeah, like, it's really oh, cool. nice one, <laughs> nice one. So going back to like you know with your artist, like with like the like the management of like your painting a pink, like you have also did like artist yeah. management before. Like, do you want to go into yeah, a bit so more detail about that? Like, I managed um, the band Scunner for a little while, um, which was great because I actually knew. So that was a part of my college course to. I had to do something for college that was like artist management and I knew um, my cousin Shay was in this band and I had heard them loads of times and I thought they're really good and I was quite young at the time so and they were even younger than that so it was like amazing to have the option and the in through Shay to be like look I'm trying to manage a band and uh, we I ended up working with them for years to be honest and it was honestly brilliant. I, I don't manage them anymore, but um, I had to leave because of health reasons. But um, working with them pretty much changed my life. It made me realise that I want to do artist management more in the future and how much I liked working with people and how important that their band was to them and how like there was, there was a lot of give and take and, and they were really in charge, but they really trusted me to do what was right for them. So. I had booked their first big headliner in Glasgow for them. We put on this gig. It was really good. You were there. Do you yeah, remember? Yeah, I, I remember. remember. <laughs> it was so good. And that was probably one of the first times that I met you. And um, now we're all like best pals. Yeah. So like, it's been so lovely. But um, yeah, we did a release with them. We released, um, when I started working with them, I made them come out with t-shirts because they've never done merch before. And Angus, who's an incredibly talented graphic designer, he's a bassist in that band, he designed all the t-shirts and I had to explain to them like, oh, like you have this, this thing called copyright, so you can't just take a, an image off the internet. So yeah. Angus was insanely good at taking like domain, like copyrighted, uh, like non-copyrighted image, public domain images, and then making them his own thing. And like, he's really like, if, if you get a chance, I would definitely say check it out. Um, they might still have the, second release of t-shirts that they did when I was working with them they actually they were still releasing up until very recently like they were still selling them so my favorite one is the one it's a little girl with like a flower crown on it's absolutely oh, lovely oh yeah I pure thought for that one I was like you have to release this one it's so pretty and then people will like that t-shirt even if they're not particularly into your music and um yeah so stuff like that and just getting them to release an EP with them got it recorded um we got a couple of songs recorded by um like a local producer and then we went to into Gla i mean it's still quite local but we got them a couple done by a kind of bigger one and then the ep is is really really good like i just recommend yeah. listening to it to anyone that thinks that they're kind of into they're quite heavy so but not not so heavy. Like I don't. I wouldn't know how to to describe yeah, their music. Yeah, they have if changed got any quite a 
quite a wee bit yeah, they have. over the they've their, since their, their developed, since developed. Yeah. yeah. And they, cause because they were originally very quite like very heavy, had a very heavy sound, but now it's it stuck with that like harder than usual, but it's also a little bit dancey. Yes. You can kinda dance to their music. It's yeah. not the kind of thing that you would shout along to, but it, it is the kind of thing you could maybe headbang to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Like <laughs> and if that's even yeah. yeah, I think that's a good way to explain it. Yeah, no, yeah. I get I get what you mean with that. And of course as well, Sam, your boyfriend, he joined. Yeah, Gunner, so yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. So <laughs> I honestly don't know how that slipped my head. Yeah. So when I left Scunner, um I had introduced Sam to them which was all which was great and they all were they were quite excited to meet Sam because Sam was in a band called Ghost Baby and I remember at the time just thinking like oh, I should have brought this up ages ago like <laughs> <laughs> they all think I'm cool now but um so Sam uh, got to be honestly it was a it was a long time ago so now Sam has been work he's they brought Sam into Scunner they asked him to play synth for them but they really wanted it to be synth and Sam had never played synth before and he was like, he's the kind of person that's just really good at playing any, he's incredibly musically talented and he can just pick up any instrument and learn it and he's really good at it. So he learned synth for Skunner and he's- I didn't know that. Yeah, like he, he learned, learned, he oh, learned I synth thought for he, Skunner. What? Yeah, man, it's, I honestly like, he wows me, but um, <laughs> so, they're, so they've got a nice wee relationship going and obviously like I still do work with them. I still book, I don't really, um, I've been working with a band called Frank's House quite a lot recently, but apart from that, I don't really manage a band. I don't really manage bands, and uh, but I do put on I promote a lot of events and gigs. So me and Scunner have kept a really good relationship. I still book a lot of gigs with them because I know that they bring people and I know that they sound good, and that's like the two main things that you have to remember yeah, when course, you're booking yeah. a band. But yeah, yeah, because and also the that scunner are are the house band so they're the oh. house band for yeah. the yeah for the it's spawn. usually to so for the the jam on the tuesdays i'm not really involved at the jam but i always try and go every tuesday it's great because i live quite close by so i can just wander in um and scunner or usually three out of five members of scunner are the house band but sometimes it's cami hope from yes. he's so if, if she can't make it, Cam will be there and he's the other drummer and he is in a band called End of and they're also great. We grew up grew up with all of them and that's uh, three of them are siblings and then there's Cammy. And that's just like I've known John since I was just a wee guy as well. So and John actually was on my music business course. We like what? chose to go and do that together. So oh, nice yeah, one. no, it's pure it's pure nice. It's ended up so well. Yeah, and that was an air was that the air camp? Um, no, so that thing? was, was that music college? business, that was college. So college. I used to go to Greenock for that and yeah. then the air one was uni. Yeah. Yeah, had to pure trick. Miles yeah. for, for my course. Is like, it worth it though? Like you've gained all this experience. College was from great. It. I loved yeah. college. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad that I've got my degree either way. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. for sure. I'd yeah. say for me, like college was the bit yeah, yeah I'd college say, was I much better college. than uni. <laughs> yeah, like I thought I would say to yeah. anyone to go to college. Yeah. Not definitely. necessarily like but yeah. I think <laughs> as well with COVID. Like, I know we don't want to talk oh. too much about it because it's COVID. like, uh, <laughs> but like, you know, like that did have a major, it, yeah. a major impact on, on it. And especially with like, you know, like being able to like actually like get in and like get yeah. like practical. That was like really hard. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I was lucky. Well, I cause most of my stuff is the business side anyway. I can kind of could use staying at home to my advantage but then you don't like I was on a music course so it would have been great to meet other musicians and like other business folk I, I think in my whole three years at uni because I started at third year um no wait that doesn't make sense in my whole two years at uni um I started in third year that was um the one part of it that I thought maybe that I'd missed out on and uh, that and speaking one-on-one -on -one with your lecturers but I think I was only actually in uni all of like three times four times yeah. since because of Covid like honestly it was mad 
yeah, it was it was very difficult, like having to. Especially, I remember like asking questions because I studied media and communication yeah. at university at Cali, and I remember you know you'd be emailing your lectures. Yeah. and it's so hard. You don't to, get like, a straight answer. You don't get that. It's so much easier to speak in person. I uh, same as like even Sometimes when it's yeah. a tone thing. Yeah, so, like, you just can't read people's tones. No, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm so I'm bad. No, like, I'm honestly, like, <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm, quite funny. Yeah, but, like we're both even like so like quite bad for overthinking. Like sometimes I'll yeah. text you and then I'll be like, oh no, like does that sound like that? Like, that that's why I love like sending like voice notes and yeah. stuff like that. Sometimes it's easier with a voice note. It's just when will I listen to it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, funny. yeah. It can be quite inconvenient. Like sometimes like I'll be people will be out places and I'm just sending them voice notes and like. So be like I can't listen to that right yeah now. I'm like that's chill that's chill yeah just wait for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so with like the promotions and things like that you know things you're working on now like what so now that you've got your degree what like what are the well I'm sticking it getting a pint I'm gonna try and get some funding for that so like just want to make it bigger and better and like I'm, I'm happy with the way it is now, but you know, I'm. There's always just something next that you can go to. But apart from that, like promotions wise, so I do all the promotions for Tent and a Pint. Um, I do occasional posters for the Bungo. Um, the event on Friday that I will be going to. It's like a Fleetwood Mac and what is it? Fleetwood Mac and Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd yeah. cover band. T- like two together. Which is great, two great bands. So uh, I did the poster for that. I did think you do that? I'm pretty sure ah, I did the poster for that I one. Re- I, didn't I need even to know go that. and check, but I did one. It's the same same Fleetwood Mac cover band as the one that I did the poster for at some point. But um, uh, then apart from that, I've got uh, a gig coming up. So I've got I've got painting a paint booked all the way into like halfway through next year. So there's like a good few of them coming up. But I've got a gig in February at the at the start of February with Frank's House it will be their first debut headliner and they're brilliant they're like a big band and there's about I don't know Jamie will, Jamie will be like correcting me I'm sure eventually <laughs> but I think there's like eight of them Is there? there's there's loads of them but um uh-huh. they're like kind of hip-hop meets folk meets funk um so that's great and then Leisureland are sporting so that's brilliant as well if you've not he- heard Leisureland they're like doing quite well recently I thought I'm, I'm well chuffed for them and um, I'm conf- yet to confirm a third band, but um, I'm really looking forward to that one, getting it like well on the way. I've got some posters, some wee pro- promotional materials made for it. Um, and I have thought re- recently, like obviously it's, it would be good to take some weight off my own shoulders, like especially with painting a pint, like I'm doing everything for it myself. So I've got um, an event coming up in March, which, um, you know Zoe Har- Zoe Harkins is doing the art for me. Yeah. Um. She's they're making a poster, um, and it's gonna be like endometriosis. It's a charity fundraiser for endometriosis UK. So I'm really looking forward to that, and it's a really special one for me. I've got endometriosis, um. So it's gonna be really nice to have a really talented artist making a wee special poster for a wee special event, and ho- I'm actually hoping to have Scunner um playing after the open mic at that event. So Scunner will be playing hopefully with um, Becky. Um, Becky's got an amazing voice and uh, she, it's a cause close to her heart as well. So I think she's quite delighted to be involved in it. So yeah, I'm I really think looking it, forward yeah. to that one. That's on the, uh, oh, come on, say I remember. It's in March. It's in March, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's in March. <laughs> it's in March. <laughs> <laughs> Should have wrote all the dates down. I don't nah, know why I've done that. I think that will be that will be a really yeah. special one. Oh um, yeah, you know for sure. Hopefully, and I don't cry when I'm doing my speech. <laughs> well, see if you do. Yeah, like, see if I you do. do. Yeah. Everyone will know that ah, oh, she's a crier. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're a pretty crier actually. Shut yeah, up. No, you are. So you actually not are. Sure. You're, you are. Like, yeah, you That's are. That's not something crier. I've ever heard. But okay, <laughs> thanks. I like that. I'll take that. <laughs> and you know, going but back. Oh, sorry. No, at least it's that. I was just still thinking. <laughs> And going back on, you know, when you said you'd had, you kind of had to leave with like doing like the artist yeah. management and things like that, you know, with having like endodo- endometriosis. Like endometriosis, yeah. Endometriosis, sorry. Endometriosis, yeah. You know, like, you know, with having that, like, that that has had a, a, big, a, big, a impact. big impact on oh, you. Massive, yeah. Especially because when I was 
uh, I think about 20 and I was still managing Scunner and it was, you know, the one of the things, like I continued on after uni for quite a while and it was one of the things at the time that I really wanted to continue to do but my health really deteriorated and it's like, it's a bit of a thing with endometriosis so when you get into your 20s, um, y your health kind of starts to deteriorate and it's quite common. Um, so I kind of, I was, I got really not well for a while um, it meant a lot of, it had quite a lot of consequences, especially in a, on your career, which I'm sure if anyone ever listens to this and they have endo, they'll know that. Um, but I was pretty much stuck in my bed for about six months until like, you know, I'm, I'm so, so lucky that my family cares so much about me and my mum and my grand, like my, that was actually when I was able to transfer over to the books because, so I taught myself how to use Sage. So I, I know how to do all sorts of bookkeeping and using accounting software and all that sort of stuff. And it was really good because I was able to do that from home. So mm -hmm. I didn't have to go in to earn money anymore. And that is like, I'm so lucky for that because um, I know that a lot, if not most women with endo and people with endo didn't, don't have that kind of, those opportunities, which is why Endometriosis UK is such an important ca charity that I've chosen for the Paint a Pint event because they help to raise awareness about endometriosis and they help, they give, they put on support groups, they do support and, and honestly, when I was, the doc, like doctors aren't great, doctors are not great uh, about it, it's so under-researched and one doc, when I first was talking about it to the doctors, they, one thing they told me was, um, so you'll be able to learn quite a lot of en on endometriosis UK because they didn't actually know that much about it, so they sent me there and I did, thankfully, and so that's why that's quite a close charity for me, but um, yeah, so that is why I ended up having to leave Scunnert because I couldn't go out and meet them and I couldn't like really do much, I couldn't go to their gigs, like I couldn't go to any gigs for like a year, yeah, which was rubbish, but um, eventually um, with my family's support, went and had surgery, I got it removed. Um, endometriosis isn't curable the now. Probably could be if they'd put as much research into it as they'd put into other things, it probably could be, but the surgery basically meant that they burnt it out. I also got like treatment, Mirena Coyle's treatment. I hope I'm not going into a wee bit to TMI here, but like, so yeah. I, I got um, it burnt it off and it got treatment. So that surgery is supposed to last kind of one to three years, so I'm on the, kind of two year mark of it now. Um, hopefully it will last longer than that. It can in some instances last longer than that. So um, that really helped me. That um, meant that I could go out and go and see gigs again and go and meet bands again and start putting on painting a pint again. And because um, I had, that was originally why I'd taken my first break from painting a pint. I think I took about a year off that before I'd started it back up again. But um, things are really good now, so hopefully it stays like that yeah. for a while. Yeah, and can I just <laughs> say you're so us. strong. Like you're, you are, though. I'm so proud of you. Oh. I am, like, and <laughs> how so far. Like, and it is. I'm it, proud it, of myself. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. alright. Right. Oh yeah. And it is so hard, like when you've when you've like stopped something, and then to get back to get back into. Especially it. you don't want to. <coughs> sorry. You know, no. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. That's all but um, yeah, no, it is. It is very hard when you've like been away from something and, and yeah. you especially when you don't want to stop exactly. it exactly it's like pure um heartbreaking to have to like leave something that you're actually you know if it's a, a job that you want especially when you're young I feel like all young people are always told you know you start off doing something for free and then you get into it and for me it actually does work out like that and then I ended up getting paid and then I had to stop it and I was just so heartbroken I felt like I was going somewhere but it's okay, I, I managed to build it back up again and managed to get myself back into the industry and like, I'm, uh, I'm very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you've really helped me with that as well with, you know, because with like, you know, mental health and mental health is such a big thing and you know, yeah. like what most people suffer with, yeah. with mental health and you know, like when I had got like, you know, a diagnosis and things like that and like, you know, when I'd, I'd left uni, I've graduated with my bachelor's and didn't yeah. stay for my honours and you know, you were always, you always just stuck by me and you're always just like, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, it's all right to take time out, like take time. Sometimes you're fighting against yourself and like, it's really hard to take a step back and realise that that's what's happening. 
and you know there might be other things going against you as well but yeah you're your own biggest yeah competitor sometimes aren't you yeah you yeah you or so your body is your own biggest your head and your body like yeah yeah a constant fight constantly like, your <laughs> own worst enemy like literally i'm my own your worst, own worst enemy, enemy that's literally the truth. My own your own biggest competitor uh, uh, that's true. yeah i'll no, go with yeah, that yeah, same. yeah 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 <laughs> And the boys as well, Scunner, they brought you, but like we're, oh, re we're repping Scunner right you know what, right we here. actually <laughs> are, go Scunner, Scunner are the best. Um, yeah, no, honestly, it was, you, yeah. and this is what I'm saying, because like I, I got to know Scunner because of Shay, but the three other boys are three of my best friends now, and yeah. like when I came out of surgery, it was literally like days after I'd got out of the hospital, I wasn't planning on seeing anyone, didn't really want to like, not that I didn't want to see anybody, but I was fresh out of surgery. Like I, yeah. I wasn't sure, and I was living back with my parents for a wee while. And uh, who shows up at the door but Sam, Angus, and Bradley with a massive bouquet of flowers and like pure chocolate and stuff. And I was just pure like, whoa, like that is so con like nice and considerate. And I will always remember that. Yeah, it's I a special moment. I like, will always remember that. I'm yeah. very lucky. I've met so many good people in the past couple of years. T through music and through the music industry and yeah and um obviously like where we are now in loud and proud as well um so when my dad bought over the bungalow he bought that over with tommy so i obviously got introduced to tommy and um they two so he'd owned brick lane with his friend chris and then they both sold that on and then my dad went in partnership with tommy and now like we work, I work doing the books in this building, which isn't in the bungalow, but got to meet Tommy and through Tommy, I've got other experiences yeah. and like got to meet all the people that work in here in this, in Loud and Proud Studios, yeah. which and is there's like, so many people that come in there's and There's so many out. different types <coughs> of creatives. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so many, sorry guys, I've got, I've got the cold a wee bit, but we're fine, we're fine, <laughs> we're, fine we're, we're pushing through. Um, but yeah, no, there is. There's so so much going on, like you know, with the creative arts in here, and there's like music lessons and things like that as well yeah. that go on in here. Um, now that you mentioned the music lessons, uh, Bradley and Angus both teach the music lessons in here. Yeah, which they did that even before I'd ever met them, and I didn't know that until like, uh, like yeah, I'm gonna say fairly recently, even though it's probably quite a while ago. But I've never seen them in here. But even yeah. the other day, like last week, I was in working and just so happened Jamie, who writes all the songs, his band, Frank's House, like he was downstairs recording music and I was like, what are you doing here? Like, yeah. It's just funny, it's just a wee world when you work. In the yeah. and especially in Paisley, because it's hard to reach, like it's easy enough to reach over into the Glasgow scene, but it's quite difficult to bring that to you. So the Paisley thing in its own is like, it's definitely its own little scene. I think it's so special yeah. what the the Pais Paisley music scene, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think like the connections as well that I've like made like yeah. through, through as well, you know, and everyone's just so supportive and like I think I've always been worried like to start, especially even like to start this podcast, like I've always been so worried because I'm like, oh, what if like, you know, like what if it doesn't work or what if people don't like it or, you know, you just you just yeah. need to try it and like you know, not everyone's gonna like all like the same things all the time. Yeah, but it's not gonna work like that. Yeah, maybe this per this episode won't be for everyone but maybe the next one will exactly who knows which will be fine who knows <laughs> that would be and, great yeah <laughs> and we were meant to have jamie down today as well yeah but jamie unfortunately couldn't make it but um we'll definitely da have him down get um, him next time yeah, yeah that, that would, would be, be great brilliant. Get, and then he can down. plug all my events <laughs> yeah it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> So for for the future plans, you know, you're are just starting to you're are just got this gig in February. Yeah. Yeah, February. So I've got the Frank's House gig in February and um I've got two paint the paints coming up. I've got one on the nineteenth of December, which is the big one. So I would like people to come to that because it's a wee Christmas event, so should be nice. And we're gonna have a wee there's always a wee artists market kind of artist stalls there. Yeah. So local Paisley people come and they sell the things that they've made for so if you're looking for Christmas presents 19th of December we like Christmas shopping <laughs> experience and um, that would be nice and then I've got another one in January um I, I think it's on the 21st of January oh, I wish I'd written this <laughs> it's so Isn't that not at all? Um, <laughs> and then March um so February we're taking a break from painting a pint but I've got the Frank's house gig in February and then March we're back with painting a pint with the wee endometriosis event so 
gonna do a big fundraiser with a wee special gig at the end so that will be a yeah. special one so yeah there's lo lots going on yeah lots going on lots to look forward yeah. to you know lots to keep us busy got ones booked right up until i think <coughs> july as well so yeah. got like like painting the paints all the way up so yeah tickets are all on paisley events so if you want to find tickets you should find them there and there and you can follow you as oh well. yeah. yeah follow on painting a paint on instagram yes yeah <laughs> please do please do check out please do check out painting a paint on instagram give fair a wee yeah. follow and see what's going on and there is a well you're talking about the people who are selling the their art yeah. and things like that the art is really cool like, yeah, yeah the, so we've got like, um basically a resident artist as well like i hope they won't mind me calling them this because We've pretty much just agreed every time, but they have literally been at every event, bar like one or two, selling their goods. So Art Wank, a big wee shout out to Art Wank as well. <laughs> Sorry, I hope I can say that. <laughs> can can beep that out, but <laughs> it's such a shame for them as well because their stuff's really like it's so cool and quirky. And, like they've oh, been a, a, a massive supporter of painting a paint, really have. And the next one, um, Erin is selling her stuff at. Yeah. So Erin's a really talented artist. She went to Glasgow School of Art. She's an incredibly talented musician. She's got one of the best voices I've ever heard. So hopefully we can get her to sing some songs as well because it's pure, she's just got a pure, I, I would even say it's quite Christmas. She's got quite a Christmassy voice. It's yeah. kind of, she sings her, her own personal songs are kind of like stuff you wouldn't mind hearing around Christmas as well because it's so like, oh Yeah. So she's got a gorgeous voice and, um, her partner Craig, who she plays with as well, he's also a really talented musician. So hopefully we can get them up to do a couple of songs. Yeah, that would be that would yeah, be cool. Yeah, that would be great. That would be really Maybe cool. Maybe we can get you up. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I remember one time, like when was it? Was it last week? I sang. I at think it was last jam. week. Yeah. <coughs> no, yeah. Not I think the so. last one, but the, like the last week. Yeah. yeah. I sang and I was and get like I just like I'm. Not, it was I'm, great. I'm not a singer. I'm not Amy a singer. McDonald's. No, I love a bit of karaoke. I do love a bit of karaoke, <laughs> but like. This is the life by Amy McDonald is my go to. That's a but, brilliant song but as see, well. It's so it is it is, but see singing like karaoke to singing with a house band, that is so different. Like, is it? Uh, yeah, like see, so, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was so different, honestly, for it. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my god. And props <laughs> to Sam as well. Like Sam basically hosts the the jams on a Tuesday night. He's taken a lot a lot on on that. So like he's an incredibly talented musician. And that is like well impressive that he was just like yeah i think i can do that yeah like, the fact i mean yeah. that's what a jam is so it's always good to have someone there that can kind of be the and he's the house band so that's kind of the ideal but to go on and do a cover and him to just be like right give me five minutes and i'll do it figure it out and then go and do it blows my mind every time like, yeah i don't know how they do that <laughs> no. i love it and I think we, I think we went into the band room for like a couple of minutes, yeah. and then he like did a few chords, and then he was like, right, okay, yeah. we're cool, we're cool. But I think it's so hard to like be able to go up and have, be able to like sing and like have the whole stage presence. You're that is good at that. Oh no, that is like that's one of my things when I'm booking, uh, when I'm scouting bands. So that's and recently I've been wanting to go out more and scout more bands because I need. It would be good to have more people that I think are really, really good so that I can have options to book people for actual gigs. But um, scouting bands, something you're looking at, oh, they sound amazing, but they're just kind of standing there. They don't really look happy to be there. Or they might be new, so they might get better at that. Like, that's something you can consider, but at the same time, you want them to engage the audience. And that, like, you actually yeah. kind of were quite good at that. Like, <laughs> me, me and Sam and Becky were all like, she got a stage presence by the way. Like, that's quite impressive. I had my phone in front of me, like, you're... Yeah, <laughs> did you actually? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you were yeah. reading the words. I was I, I scared remember. in case, like, I knew the words, but I you know you that way you're... Yeah, <laughs> you're scared in case, like, you don't, like, I don't know. I'm gonna, yeah, like, you, like, forget. skip them or something. Like. Yeah, I don't know. But, but that's I, normal yeah. at a jam. Like, people do have the words and, like, yeah. open mics and stuff. That's quite... A standard thing yeah and open mic and a jam is good for that kind of thing because it's so much more casual you don't you aren't expected to go up and be amazing at it you're just like everyone knows it's such a as well like the jam's great but painting a pint is such a nice atmosphere for first timers because it's so calm and cozy and like yeah. everyone's so friendly I, and nobody yeah. ever judges anyone it's so i've never heard like bad words now because i do work like i do work with a lot of, like I've heard a lot of bands especially if you work behind the bar 
in a music venue, you know, it's hard sometimes to sit and listen to all the bands. You're not always going to think they're all amazing. Yeah, or, or yeah. be your type of like music. Yeah, yeah or, your type, of, or yeah. your type of music. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. maybe yeah. I should have said yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you know, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. but um, like, it's so nice to be genuinely proud of the music that you put on. Most of the time, that's like, for me, I wouldn't do it. Like, I wouldn't put the bands on just because I know that they bring a lot of people. But I also, it is an important thing. So if you're passionate about a band but they don't know how to bring people, then you do have to consider that. So you, like that's where that's always where my promotions and my management crosses over, and I will always get a wee bit attached to a band, and I'm like, oh, I could definitely bring more od of an audience to you, and stuff like that. So I think like that's where you you need to decide like, oh, am I going <coughs> to commit to like doing this for a while with this band or, but. It's great, like there's uh, there's a lot of good bands that that's happened to with me and it's such a nice experience. Yeah, no, definitely. And I just think yeah, overall, you know, there is so much like going on like going on and like yeah. so many different things and Especially in the bungalow as well. Yeah, yeah, the bungalow and like yeah, I couldn't be more grateful for for, for you know, like Tommy giving me this opportunity. Like yeah. I remember he'd came in one time and he'd seen me and he we were in the band room and yeah, I you remember you, that. yeah. I and, literally yeah. remember the yeah. first time that you just met. I'd forgotten. Oh, about and that. he had said he was like, It's so hard. Like if you guys have been in the bungalow, you know, it is it is a noisy, it's a music venue, yeah. of course. So like, you know, and like we were in the band room doing I, I can't even remember who it was. I did did quite a quite a few we we interviews in, in there and a lot, you did yeah, a lot. And we were chatting away and like and Tommy after was like, you know, it'd be good because what you need to cut them right down. I yeah. had to cut down the sound bites. We'd be chat. I'd be chatting to a band for what, like, you know, like forty minutes. Yeah. And you'd cut down to like three, three minutes. minutes. And like it was so hard. So that's why it's I good know, to get this like, opportunity. What you even I know because yeah, I wouldn't get. I don't get all this. Like, I'm like <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. I'll come and chat to you. But <laughs> yeah. Time. So like for him to you know for it to have this opportunity to be down at Loud and Proud Studios yeah. and to be you know still be a big part of being around the bungalow and yeah and being able to meet all the creative people that are around here is just amazing. So thank it you is. so much for for coming on today and you know chatting with me. That's all right. Yeah, I had really a great time. Yeah. It's always brilliant fun to like talk about stuff that you're proud of and what you're proud of yourself for and to hear you saying that you're proud of me. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you, boobs. <laughs> nah, for That's sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, guys, please do. Um, please do check out Painting a Paint on Instagram. Yeah. And yeah, definitely do. You will see all the upcoming gigs that are coming up with in, in February and the Painting a Paint in December the nineteenth. December the nineteenth. Yeah. yeah. So get that get that in your diary. <laughs> and then yeah, please do check me out on Instagram at the Soundcheck with Soph and. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time.